Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to talk about a great piece of free software, open source, called Wireshark. And Wireshark is used to capture packets and network analyze. So let's go to its site, www.wireshark.org. Wireshark is open source and really easy to get. Uh, it does work on Windows. Uh, Mac and Linux and all you have to do is click get and go ahead and save it to your desktop or to your my documents in my case and when you do that and it's already there I've already done gone through the process when you save it it's an executable so all you have to do is click on it and go through the installation process and agree and it's just a straightforward installation process nothing special here so when you complete the process you're ready to go I've already installed it so I'm not going to install it again but you can see the process and how easy it is now once you've installed it just go down to the start menu click on start programs and Wireshark and the program will come up and now we're going to talk about getting your browser ready to use Wireshark. We are doing a quick introductory series to Wireshark and in this series we're going to show you how to examine HTTP requests, cookies, forms, and grabbing simple FLVs. And then we're going to actually go and show you a real example of grabbing a website and content in that website that would not be accessible to you unless you used Wireshark. So we're in Wireshark and we're going to show you how to get your browser ready. Now one of the issues is, is when you open up your browser you usually have it set to some page to open up with. In my case it's the uh, NKU homepage. So I'm going to open up my browser, bring up a brand new browser, and you can see it opens up right to the NKU homepage. And what happens is there's quite a few packets that are transferred back and forth. And that may not be the website I'm interested in looking at. So what I want to do is set this to blank so I don't get all those packets. And I can start anew, and I'll know all the packets that I'm getting will be from the site that I'm trying to investigate. Now what I'm doing here I'll do for Firefox, but it's very similar for Explorer as well. So just go to uh, Tools and Options. And in the Options panel you see when Firefox starts, and I can show my home page or which in this case is http www.nku.edu or I can show a blank page and that's what I want because I want no pack no burst of packets to t happen when I start uh, the page so let's get out of this and let's start it again and see what we get and see indeed I do get that blank page so now my browser is ready to work with Wireshark so what are we going to do today well in this series we'll be talking about examining HTTP requests, cookies, forms, and I'll show you an FLV example. And then later on, we'll be going on and using this for a real website um, grab. So let's go ahead and start. What I want to do is go to Capture Interface. And you can see I have a few options here, but the real thing that's running is the IP address that's showing right here. 192, 168, 200, 253. I know that's a real address and it's running from my Ethernet card, which is usually where it's going to run from. But you may have a wireless as well. So all I have to do to start the pack, capture packet is hit start. And now I'm ready to start capturing. Now, Jeff Heaton uh, from www.heatonresearch.com uh, has a book called Java Bots where he discusses uh, wire. Shark, and he actually has given some addresses that you can use. And so we're actually going to use some of Jeff's addresses to test Wireshark. Here's one www.httprecipes.com. Let's go ahead and put that in our browser. Let's click on it and let's see what kind of uh, packets we receive. So I'm going to open up my browser. I'm going to paste that address in there. Let me bring this a little bit down so you can watch it go into play and hit go. And you can see immediately that Wireshark is grabbing all the packets that are being transferred between my browser and the server that I'm requesting the information from. And as I surf around and do more to uh, Jeff's website, 
then what will happen is different uh, packets will be transferred and more information will be brought in. So every single request that goes back and forth between my browser and that server is being grabbed by Wireshark and isn't that super cool? So let me remind you of the process that we just went through. I opened up Wireshark and I brought up a blank browser then I put in Jeff Heaton's uh, recipe site and I clicked go and then I started grabbing packets. Let's review the process one more time. Capture interfaces look for that active IP should be a Ethernet driver most likely and hit start and then we're going to continue to start capturing with uh, this website. There's nothing in there yet until I activate the website so let's go ahead and click on that website and now information is beginning to be transferred between my browser and the web server and all that information is being captured in the screen here. Now one of the great advantages of Wireshark is the ability to filter and there's two ways to filter. You can use the expressions tab or you can type directly into the filter box right here. Let's start with expressions and I'm looking for HTTP and you can see right here is a protocol column. Now I can click on that and it will alphabetize that column or I can just t look here in the expressions box and look for HTTP. Let's do that first and there it is. Let's click on it and nothing will happen until I hit the apply button and when I do I have filtered out the HTTP protocol. Alright, what we're going to do now is clear that expression here and apply and let's do that through the filters box and I'm going to start typing in HTTP. Now notice it's pink and that's because it's checking to make sure the expression is correct and when I get to the correct expression it turns green saying hey there's some error checking here now you have a right expression apply it and let's do our filter and there's our HTTP address and there's a lot of information there so let's click on one of these there you go and you get frame ethernet internet protocol transmission and hypertext transfer protocol click on that open that up and you can see there's a lot of information here. There's my host, my user agent, which is Windows, accept, accept language, accept encoding, accept character set, keep alive, and connection. So here's all the information that, that you get with the HTTP request. And you can see here's my address, www.httprecipes.com, which is going to be very important when I start writing the bots that I need to grab HTTP recipes from the web. Now why am I interested in that? Let me show you what the project is. One of the things that I have been interested in doing in the past is having an application that you can web push students to. So basically you have a website, you're talking live with your students on that website, you click on an address, you're pushed to that address and you want all your students to be pushed to that as well. We have written applications like that using the Flash Media Server. However, we had to pre-populate those HTTP addresses. What the bots will allow us to do is to grab those on the fly and send those addresses to our students and create a web push or a web virtual tour software live and then that could be captured for recording purposes to be played back later. So that's the whole motivation of where I'm going here. Just one more thing about Wireshark is that when you're done capturing the packets that you need, say for example, I may be finished with this website, uh, everything I do will be transferred so as I grab and and click on different uh, items you'll see I'll get more information here in the screen and I have filtered it so I'm only getting the HTTP addresses now but when you're done grabbing all the information you want and maybe you're examining a particular piece of information you don't want more information on there to cloud what you're seeing you can just hit the stop button right here and therefore no matter what you do at this point no more information will be transferred to Wireshark so to run this application you'll continually be going between capture interfaces and stop and grabbing the important information that you need for the task involved.